everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Kavya and welcome back to part two of this mini two-part video series I've created here featuring the popular and classic origami design, the paper crane. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to create a beautiful paper crane mobile and I am so excited for today's video. This is something that I've been wanting to create for a really, really long time, but just never managed to get around to it. So here we are. This home decor DIY idea was actually inspired by my travels in Japan. I've been to Japan on two separate occasions. I traveled there in 2014 with some friends and then I went back there again more recently in 2019 with my husband. And both of those trips are trips of a lifetime. I love Japan. It's one of my favorite places to visit. And if you didn't know, in Japanese culture, the paper crane is symbolic of peace, hope, and good fortune. During my travels in 2014, my friends and I visited a place called Takayama, and it's a small, quaint little city nestled in the Japanese Alps. And whilst we were there, we happened to visit some markets that were open in the area. And there was one particular shop at those markets that I still remember to this day as we walked in one of the first things we noticed was the ceiling the ceiling in that place was magical there were hundreds of paper cranes and various other handcrafted items hanging and cascading down from the ceiling and I still remember how cozy and beautiful and colorful it all looked and felt and so that my friends is the inspiration that I'm holding on to for today's DIY and hopefully we can recreate some of that magic here in this video today. So I hope you guys enjoy it and without further ado, let's get started. The first and obvious thing are my paper cranes. So I have here 24 paper cranes that I folded in last week's video. So if you don't know how to fold a paper crane and you want to learn how, definitely head on over, check out that video. I take you through step by step how to fold a paper crane and I also talk a little bit about what paper size that I've gone for and the different paper patterns and styles that I have opted for. So I'll leave that linked in the description. You will also need some clear craft wire, so I have some here, as well as a sewing needle to help thread your wire through your paper cranes. I'm going to also be using some four millimeter thick macrame and I just have it here in this natural cotton color. You'll need four pieces that are two and a half meters in length each, and then one piece that is 60 centimeters in length. Next is this craft hoop. So I have this hoop, uh, it is 23 centimeters in diameter, and if you're following along today and doing exactly what I'm doing, I would recommend that you use something of this size, probably nothing bigger than 25 centimeters. You can go smaller, that's completely fine, but just bear in mind if you go for a hoop that is significantly bigger, then you are gonna need to do the math and add more macrame. Otherwise you'll run out of macrame halfway through your project, which is never a good thing. Uh, and this is actually the insert to an embroidery hoop that I had. So I just decided to pop out the insert and use that. But you can find craft hoops or like macrame hoops separately. There are a few on Amazon. I'll link a few below just in case you wanna check them out. I'm also using 24 little craft beads. I have them here, they're just these small ones in this clear pearly white finish. Uh, but you can go for any size, any color that you like. I just opted for these because they were pretty neutral and they blended in with the color scheme that I've gone for for my paper cranes. And then finally, you'll also need some craft glue. I have a hot glue gun that I'm gonna be using, but any kind of craft glue is fine. And essentially what you're using the glue for is to stick down the ends of your macrame at the end um, onto your hoop once you've cut the cord. So it's just to tie up any loose ends and things like that. So the first thing that I'm doing is grabbing my four pieces of macrame that are two and a half meters in length each. And I'm just gonna bring the ends of each of those strings together just to make sure that they're all aligned. And then I'm going to fold all of my strings in half, 
Once you've folded your macrame in half like this, uh, you want to find some kind of hook or a rail or even a door handle, something like that to hang your strings from, just to make it a little easier to work with them. Whatever you do use, just make sure that you can actually slide your strings off at the end. I will show you guys the setup that I'm using. So I have a clothes rack here and I could just as easily take all of my macrame and hang it off the rail like this. But the problem I'm gonna have at the end is that I have no way of actually taking my macrame off without having to cut these strings, which you don't wanna do. So uh, instead, what I'm actually gonna do is grab some kind of hook or a clip. I have here a, a binder clip that I'm gonna use. Um, and this one just opens and closes like this. So I'm gonna open that up, slide my strings onto this clip, and then I'm gonna take all of these and hang them off my rail and if you don't have a clip or a hook or anything like that another really simple solution is to just take a smaller piece of string so i have one here um, and then what you can do is slide all your other strings onto this small piece of string and then you can take that string and tie it around whatever it is that you're using uh, and then at the end, once you're finished, you can just cut that top string off or untie it and then take your macrame off that way as well. Now that I have my longer pieces of macrame hanging up, I'm going to make what's called a gathering knot. And basically this is a knot that's going to tie all of these strands together and it's going to create a little loop at the top and that forms the beginning of our mobile. And to make this gathering knot, you're going to need to take your smaller piece of string that we cut to 60 centimeters in length. And and I haven't taped the ends of this string, just so you guys know, um, because I find that with this next step, it's just a lot neater if you don't have tape on the ends. And I'm gonna take one end, and I'm just gonna loop a little bit of it around like this to create a little teardrop or a loop. And then what I'm going to do is place this loop on top of all of my other strands, like so. Just leaving maybe an inch or so from the top. And so I'm just gonna place it there. And then what I wanna do is leave this end exposed. And I'm going to take the longer side and I'm going to start wrapping it around all of my other strands. And I'm going to wrap it around maybe six, seven times or so. I find that's a good amount. And as you're wrapping it around, just make sure that you're leaving the end of this loop exposed. And I'll show you guys why in a second. So I'm taking that all the way around. All right. And then what I'm gonna do with the end is actually bring it over and thread it into this loop here, like so. And then the final step of this knot is to take this top strand here that we left exposed and to pull it through. And you'll notice what it's doing is it's actually threading this end through these strands here. I'm going to just pull that through and you don't want to pull it all the way through because then everything will unravel but you just want to pull it through so that the strand is sitting in the middle here all right and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to just trim off the excess pieces of string so just trimming it off at the top and then trimming it off at the bottom as well to neaten it up there we go and that is your gathering knot complete now you'll notice that we formed a little loop at the top and this is what we're going to use to hang our mobile from either a hook from the ceiling or wherever you plan on putting it in your home uh, and if you find that this loop is either too small or too big you can adjust it by just dragging these strands down or up as you need. For this next step, I'm gonna be knotting my strings just to create a bit of a pattern. And you'll notice you have eight strings here. So I'm actually gonna be uh, sectioning them off into pairs of two so that I have four separate sections like this. And the knot that I'm gonna be using is called an alternating half hitch knot, which is super easy. And if you're just starting off with macrame, it's a great one to learn. So to make an alternating half hitch knot, what you wanna do is you wanna grab your two strings. So you've got your left one and your right one. You're gonna bring your left string over your right, loop it behind, and then pull it through like this. And then you're just going to slide that up like so. And then you want to repeat that, but this time we're going to be bringing the right string over the left string like this, looping it behind and then pulling it through like this and then sliding it up. 
and I'll show you guys a close up just so you can see what I'm doing. So we've got our two strings here. We're gonna bring the left string over the right and then we're going to loop it behind like this and then pull it through and then slide that up. That's knot number three. And then we're doing the same thing, but with the right one. So we're gonna bring the right over the left like this. We're gonna loop it behind and then pulling it through and then sliding it up like that. And that's knot number four. And the reason I'm keeping count is because I wanna make a total of 25 knots on this section. And then I'm gonna be repeating it and creating 25 knots on the other three sections as well. So I've completed all of my knots. I've got 25 alternating half inch knots on each of my four sections. I'm gonna take my hoop and attach it onto my rope. And before I do that, I've actually gone ahead and used a ruler to evenly mark out four points on my hoop. That way when I go to attach my macrame, I can space it out evenly and I know exactly where to position them. And in order to attach my hoop, what I'm gonna do is take one section of my macrame position it in front of my hoop like this and you'll see you've got your two strings here and you've also got an opening up here so what I'm going to do is take these two strings behind my hoop and then bring them through this opening just like that and then I'm going to pull these strings to tighten this knot and slide my hoop up so that it sits just where those knots finish up like that. And then I'm gonna repeat that with the other sections as well. Now that I've done that, I like to have a quick look at my hoop and just make sure that it's not tilting one way or the other and that it's nice and straight and balanced. And if I do need to adjust it, I can just slide these strings along my hoop and just position them wherever I want them, or I can just as easily loosen or tighten these strands as required to center it even further. But I'm pretty happy with how it's looking there. So I'm going to move on to the next step, which is basically taking one of these two pieces of string. So I'm gonna take the one on the right and I'm gonna bring it underneath and then I'm going to wrap it over the top of my hoop like that and I'm going to continue wrapping it along the length of this hoop. I'm just wrapping it until I get about halfway across the hoop here. And then what I'm gonna do is take the strand on the other side. So I'm gonna take the left one on this side and I'm going to repeat that process. So bringing it underneath and over and wrapping it along the length of the hoop. And this one is going to meet this string in the middle here. So as you guys can see, I've almost completed wrapping the hoop from both ends and I've gone ahead and completed this step for all the other sections of my hoop as well so that they're ready to go. And the final step for this part before we trim these strings is to glue them down so that they are secure and they don't unravel. And I'm going to do that by adding a little bit of glue to the front of my hoop first, wrapping the strings around at the front and sticking them down. And then at the very end, I'm going to also add a little bit of glue to the back of my hoop, stick the strings down at the back before I trim them. And then finally, I'm just gonna go ahead and trim off the excess pieces of string. 
Another little tip, if you do have some frayed ends that you want to neaten up and stick down, you can just pour your glue over those ends and smooth out your glue to further stick down those ends and stop them from fraying even further. And because this is the back of your hoop, it's not going to matter as much because no one's going to be able to really see it from a distance. It is now time to put all the pieces together and bring this creation to life. I'm starting off by dividing my paper cranes into six groups of four, with each group containing a slightly different mix of colors and patterns to add some variation throughout my mobile. I'm cutting off an 80 centimeter piece of clear craft wire, threading it onto my sewing needle and making a knot at the base to stop that string from sliding off whilst I work with it. I'm then taking one of my beads, threading it onto my string and positioning that bead so that it's close to the end of my string. I'm then going to loop my needle in through the bottom and out through the top of this bead a few times and then also knotting it a few times to make sure that bead is nice and anchored and won't slide off. Next, I'm going to take a paper crane, thread the needle through the base of the crane and poke it through the top and slide that paper crane down the string until it's sitting nicely on top of that bead. As you can see, the beads are there to help anchor and position the paper cranes on the string so that they don't fall off. I'm now going to repeat this by taking another bead, threading it onto my string, and this time I want to leave a gap of about 5-6 inches between my bead and the top of the paper crane below it. And then I'm going to thread my needle in and out through that bead and knot it a few times again to make sure it's nice and secure. I'm then taking my second paper crane, threading my needle through the base and out of the top, and sliding that paper crane down the string until it's sitting nicely on top of that second bead. I'm going to repeat this process until I have four paper cranes strung onto this piece of string and then I'm going to repeat that again so I have six strings with four paper cranes strung onto each of them. Once I'm finished with each piece of string, I like to just hang it up somewhere so that it's out of the way and doesn't get tangled up. And let me just say that this here in itself looks totally dreamy. Now I'm going ahead and tying each string of cranes onto my hoop spacing them apart nice and evenly across six different points. And then trimming off any excess string to finish it up. Thank you. 
And that, my friends, is a wrap for today's video. I'm so happy with how this turned out. I think it's a beautiful home decor piece. I'm considering hanging this from the ceiling of my home office slash studio, which is a current work in progress, but I'll definitely be sharing that makeover in another video here on this channel later on. Also, I feel like this would make the perfect gift. I know Christmas is just around the corner as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave it a like if you did. And also, if you recreate anything here on my channel, I would love to see your creations. Feel free to tag me at Life of Cots and also use the hashtag Life of Cots on any of your social media platforms. I'm currently in the process of expanding, so you'll hopefully see me around in a few different places here on the web. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.